Okay, so now we have done the first cleaning step of the PCR uh, products and it's all finished. So now we have all these Eppendorf tubes with clean uh, DNA that we hopefully have got rid of dimers. Uh, you can do another gel after the cleaning step just to see if you have lost a lot of uh, DNA or that you have gotten rid of all the dimers. Uh, or you can go straight to PCR2. And PCR2 is a little bit different from PCR1. It has a lot of similarities, but this is where we add uh, the index primers. And the index primers help us distinguish the different samples from each other because they are our unique barcodes that is added to the adapter part of the primers we used in the previous step. Uh, and this can make a unique combination. So it's basically a small tag that said this sample, when we sequence it, or uh, have this name and so on, that can be connected to the metadata sheet, for example. Uh, but the important thing here is that these samples now contain high amounts of PCR products, and they should only be in the post-PCR lab not go to the pre-PCR lab, but the master mix and the index primers, they are in the pre-PCR lab. And in the pre-PCR lab, we do the uh, mixing of the master mix, and we also add the uh, primers to all of the different PCR tubes in the pre-PCR, and then we take out the PCR uh, tubes to the post-PCR lab right here and add our samples here. So these samples should never leave the post-PCR lab. It should only be here to avoid contamination issues.